Perfect. We are live. I am very excited to have Hallie Noble from Fiskard Asset Management with me today. We are going to be talking about your alternative financing uh, solutions. Um, you know, it's, it's one of those areas that can sometimes get some negative press and I want to help dispel if that's the right word. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> the uh the feeling around the whole um alternative solution uh so i'll i'll get to my disclaimers i do disclaimers at the beginning my dogs let's see i've got i've got one dog in the office today so one dog's in the office the other one's out there so hopefully i don't get a delivery and the doorbell rings and the dogs go crazy um anything discussed right now you know rules and regulations do change like we change seasons and change weather in Alberta. So um, everything we discuss is current. So double check with me to make sure that nothing's changed um, in the future. So Holly, thank you again so much for coming on. I'm so excited to have you here. Well, thanks for inviting me. I love chatting about this topic and the fact that you know alternative lending or slash private lending is not definitely not what it used to be. For sure. This is not deals on the back of napkins. It's very um, highly regulated, very professional, uh, very secure. So it's a good time to be talking about it. Yeah, it, it really is, especially with how hot the markets are across Canada, right? Um, sometimes the alternative solution is the best short-term solution. And when you say that it regulated, so maybe talk a little bit about how, how even your company, Fiscard, is regulated? Sure. Well, there's different buckets of mortgage money in Canada. What we consider our A lenders are typically our large banks, the TDs, the Scotias, et cetera. A B lender might be um, some of our mortgage finance corporations, even though they have A products, but they're kind of that level of financing could be the MCAPs of the world, First Nationals. Um, we have some home trusts and equitables that are banks, but do B products. And then there's mortgage investment corporations commonly referred to as private lenders, uh, but there's absolutely nothing private about what we do. We are regulated provincially, whereas the banks are regulated federally. So we, if, if we register our company to lend in Alberta, we have a license there, we have a license in BC, we have a license in whatever province that you're lending in, uh, but not only with the mortgage licensing body, but also securities commissions as well. So and we're actually regulated by two bodies in every province, not just one with regular re reporting, regular annual and sometimes sem semi-annual audits. I mean, there's really nothing private and kind of under the table about a mortgage investment corporation. Yeah, and that's some, I, I love doing these videos because I always learn something. I didn't realize you had two regulators, well, right? So, yep. so really when somebody has a mortgage with you, yeah. they're safe. Right, that's very much so. Yeah, and uh, it's, you know, our guidelines are out there for mortgage professionals to deal with like yourself. You know you know how what we lend on, you know what our rates are. Um, we know all of the deals are written by lawyers or are more underwritten by lawyers um, and our underwriting team. You know, in Alberta, for example, you know, we're regulated by RECA for our licensing, but also the Alberta Securities Commission. So if someone is either investing, they're protected. If someone is borrowing, they're protected. You know, it's, it's really quite complicated and taxing for a company like ourselves to have almost 10 regulators. You'd think it'd be easier just to deal with one um, as you know, as some of our larger banks do, uh, but certainly every province is different, but yeah, this very protected and the rules are extremely tight. Uh, and you know, and that's so they should be, you know, what governments are there to, and government bodies such as regulators are there to protect the interests of the consumer and make sure that we're not taking advantage of them and doing what's good for them. So I'm, I'm not against regulation at all. No, and and you know you you brought up something that made me re remember what I wanted to say at the at the top of of uh, going live. You are just when I thought of alternative solutions, you were the first person that popped in my mind because you are such a force within our industry, and you are a force for knowledge. You are a force for um, the industry in general, like just the, the work that you do within the industry to bring credibility, um, the work that you do within the WIMI group, you know, we have a women in the mortgage industry group yeah. 
and just the mentorship and everything that you provide personally, I could, that's why I couldn't think of a better person to talk about just because of the credibility that you bring with your company and your knowledge and what you have done within the industry. So that's, I completely flaked and forgot to say that's how great. much we appreciate everything you do. And I know not everybody gets the opportunity to say so. So I wanted to say so on here. So thank well, you. I, I do appreciate your kind words. And I have to tell you, you know, my dad was licensed as a, a realtor and a mortgage broker in 1968, the year before I was born. I was born in 69. My mother, mother was a realtor and a mortgage broker. I've grown up in this business. And my dad said, you know, if you want to have opportunity, Holly, be part of the dirt. In other words, you could be a lender, you could be a mortgage broker, you could be a realtor, you could be a appraiser, you could be a builder. Anything that involves housing, people need a place to live, either someone to build it, buy it from, finance it, or rent it. He says, you will always have opportunity. And he's correct. Um, and, and I have a passion for this business. And we now we are in our fourth generation of our family within the Fiskar group of companies. So I, I do take it very personally that it's my job to mentor and to make sure the right information is out there in the marketplace. And this is what's so great about having a session like this. We can dispel the myths. We can talk about it. Uh, but I really appreciate uh, your such kind words. Oh, no, you, you need all the accolades you can get, girl. <laughs> so, okay, back to, back to the meat and potatoes. Yeah. What, what information do you want consumers to know? This is a fantastic question because we do see as markets change, as mortgage regulations change, as the lenders tighten up, uh, there's still opportunity out there to maybe buy or have to refinance, maybe do bridge deals, et cetera. Just because someone is like our company called a private lender, we prefer that alternative lender, doesn't mean that it's the lender of last resort, that interest rates are extremely high and they're short term and uh, you know, a lender, you're going to get stuck in there forever. I've got to tell you, I've never seen more competitive alternative lending rates in our field, you know, from 5% to 10% for first and second mortgages really depends on what it is. And there's, if you know, once a mortgage professional like yourself does the math, if, so, if someone's paying out consumer debt, for example, that six or 7% mortgage is a heck of a lot cheaper than the 18, 19, 20% credit card. Uh, you know, so there's, it's always about doing the math and understanding the solution and knowing who you're dealing with. Uh, you know, we talked a little bit before about the difference between a private individual and investor and a mortgage investment corporation like Fiscard is, for example. That private individual investor might be, you know, a happy noble using my RFP money to invest in an individual mortgage. That's great, but that's not the business that that investor may be in. You know, we are 24-7, 365 days, this is what we do. This is the business that we know. But there are intangible types of deals, and you'll see this a lot in Alberta right now, the market's very busy thank you, and frothy, uh, but things like job probation. So someone's moved from BC to go back to work in the patch, for example, uh, but they're on probation. That's not a bankable uh, borrower yet. They're not bankable at the credit union or one of your mortgage finance corporations or at some of the large banks until they're off probation, but they still need a place to live and they still may have somewhere that they really want to buy or maybe they have a good deal on it. We could, the, in corporations like Fiskard and other private lenders, you've got a lot of great ones in Alberta. We can do those short-term deals at a very reasonable interest rate, generally right now anywhere, you know, kind of between six and 8% that fills that gap and allows someone to take advantage of an opportunity that they may not have had. They may have to wait that three to six months in their probation before they could actually buy a home. And that's really that kind of special situation lending that we do. And it's really important. There's a number of spousal buyouts in the event of divorce. Very difficult to finance, but you may be able to use a lender like us to clean up that situation. Um, of course, eventually either a house is sold or one of the spouses has moved out, but equity is, is divided. That's another example, CRA issues. We know we're gonna see a ton of that coming up, unfortunately, because of COVID, right? A lot of business for self people where they may have normally, as they should put maybe their, um, their income tax funds aside to pay CRA have been using them to live off of, but eventually they're still going to have to pay where a private lender, alternative lender like Fiskard and the other mortgage investment corporations can step in, help them through that short-term gap and then get them back to something that is uh, more bankable. Yeah, no, and 
Yeah, you say the CRA debt, it's, it's kind of scary, isn't it? Yeah. Just yeah, I have a feeling we're going to see a lot of that this spring. But you know, when someone has uh, equity in their property, but doesn't show enough income because of the things maybe that happened during COVID or maybe because of what's happened in the patch over the past couple of years, they're not showing a lot of income, but they have equity in their property. We're able to help them access that equity, either clean up some credit, um, help them through their CRA issues, um, just get them by until the point where they can, are actually back to work, or maybe they've had a chance to sell their home without fire sailing it because they feel under pressure from debt. We, you know, again, these are not 16, 17% rates. These are, you know, six to eight in there for uh, first mortgages, kind of eight to 12 for second mortgages. Uh, it's reasonable and it's usually a really good fix. And sometimes if you can just help someone step back, clear up the issue, have some breathing room, don't panic. I mean, that's all they need. Sometimes it's buying people time. Exactly. And you know, that it's funny when you think about it because I've seen a lot of, um, I don't want to say the name of the, the institution, but there's loans out there right now, lines of credits and credit cards that I'm seeing for 39.99%. You know, clients will have a $15,000 line of credit and they've had it for a couple of years and they've only paid down $2,000 on the balance because the, the interest rate is so high, right? And quite so, often not paid any principal down, just interest. Yeah. So these, the solution is to go to a lender that can, can consolidate these debts, start paying down the principal into you know, usually one payment and make it a lot simpler. But it is amazing how simple it is to get consumer credit these days it's unbelievable we had an application come in the other day they had over three hundred thousand dollars worth of consumer credit it's a young couple jointly made one hundred fifty thousand dollars a year oh, how did they get all this credit that get it that's my hot button <laughs> ask my husband that's my hot button you know it's um a, a lot of times people can go in and buy a brand new rv and not even have to provide a, a pay stub. Yeah. Like, how how is that? How's that possible? How's I know. That possible? That's a whole other oh, session, yeah. isn't it? Uh. <laughs> Yet we're regulated up up the wazoo, right? So yeah. it's it's crazy. It is, and it's really, uh, it's kind of backwards thinking because wouldn't you want someone, at least when they have a mortgage, uh, they have a roof over their heads. They have an asset, a tangible asset that, you know, we hope doesn't decline. You can't control every economy and every market. You know, the ideal is, you know, even if you had to be in there five, 10, 20 years, you have this asset. Whereas a depreciating asset like an RV or other toys, they're virtually, you know, half the value when they drive them off the lot. So I do have a kind of a, an issue with consumer debt for sure. But we want to, we, I'm certain, we really want to make sure that all of your clients and your consumers that might be listening today, understand there are many alternative sources of mortgage financing and not to be afraid when they're dealing with what someone will say, I'm taking you to a private lender. Ideally, they're taking you to a private lender, like a mortgage investment corporation. That is, that's the business they're in. That's the profession, not necessarily Mr. or Mrs. Smith with their RSPs. Because what happens a year from now when you have a financed a mortgage with Mr. and Mrs. Smith, which is great, but they want their money back and the situation for your client hasn't changed. So now you're having to search for another lender. You're having to go through the process again. It's expensive. It's stressful when you could be dealing with a mortgage investment corporation. Again, like this guy, I keep saying the names, but that is in the business. Yeah. Um, generally, we're just going to keep renewing the mortgage until something changes. I mean, that's what we do. So you'd be really careful about that. And I, I caution folks, just understand your lender, know your lender, know what their wants and needs would be. You know, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith can be ha ha totally happy with the mortgage that they provided for you, but all of a sudden they see the headline in the news, Alberta market crashing, oil and gas going down, all these different things and like, oh my God, I want my money back. Yeah, or like when CMHC came out and said that property values were going to drop 19%. Oh, freaked right? everybody out. Yeah, right. so right. that's, that's kind of nerve wracking. So. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's really nerve wracking because that's why I say it's if a company like ours um, would say, okay, well, we can read between the lines. We, you know, we understand the market. 
we don't look, we don't make our mortgage decisions based on headlines. Yeah. We make our mortgage decisions based on the reality and real stats and lots of market research. Whereas, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Smith can't rely on that or their neighbor comes over and goes, oh my God, the real estate market's crashing. No, this is still a very good investment. You have to understand too, why would Mr. and Mrs. Smith want to invest in a mortgage in real estate? Because Canadian real estate is wanted all over the world. Everybody wants a piece of Canadian real estate if they can come into the country and get it. So it, it is a very safe investment. Um, it's a very popular investment, but it's not liquid and people want to get in and out when they can. And it can be very dangerous for your borrower, especially when you're in the, a situation when they're already stressed out because they're paying a higher interest rate. The last thing you need to do is be able to call them back and say, hey, you know, my, my individual private investor wants their money back. That's yep. the last thing they need. We need, we need to get you out. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. The, um, the one thing since I've been a broker and, and been dealing with, um, with the mix, you know, the more yeah. companies is to always have an exit strategy, yeah. right? That's, that's when we're submitting an application to a lender like yourself, that is one of the things that I've been coached from the start is to have that exit strategy. And before I'm even submitting an application to a lender like yourself, I've already had that conversation with the clients. Like we need to know what the exit strategy, you know, for this short term solution is. Yeah. So that's always important for a, a lender like yourself, correct? Definitely. We certainly, because it's generally a one to two year term. Um, and it used to be, you know, six months to a year, but things have changed. Uh, and we know that most borrowers need one to two years. Uh, so, and, you know, most of the private lending solutions have very minimal prepayment penalties or even some are fully open. So the client can get out at any time, which is really important too. So they've got some kind of safety in the fact that it might be a one-year term, but that probation, they, they're now they've got a full-time job, they're off probation and you can take them to a lender that they can get out and be paying less interest super important. But yes, going through that situation and the explanation about an exit strategy with your borrower is really important. So let's just say it's a credit issue. Borrower one or borrower two has poor credit. So under 650, 680 beacon score, that's generally going to fall into a private mortgage situation. You need to be able to help them. This is so great about dealing with a mortgage broker as opposed to just walking into a bank. How are we going to fix your credit? What are the steps that we're going to take over this next year or two to bring your credit to a point where your beacon score is bankable? In other words, I say bankable, another conventional lender or your mortgage finance corporations like the MCAPs and, and the um, First Nationals of the world, really great lenders. That takes time and that takes work. And that's something that someone like yourself, Lisa, is gonna go through and go step by step with the client to help them meet their needs. And that's really, really important. So it's, it's a lot of work. I'm not sure that consumers understand just how much time and energy mortgage brokers put into creating those plans, you know, the plan of attack to get to your exit. So that's a credit one. It could be um, income, like I mentioned earlier about probation, or there's gonna be a lot of income issues right now with COVID. I've been laid off for nine months. I'm going back to work in June, or I was supposed to go back to work in April and then we just shut down again or lockdown, and, you know, so all these different things. That's okay. <laughs> I'd like to see if you have, what kind of dog do you have? <laughs> oh, she's making oh, nice. the entrance. Rocky nice Bell. Hair. Oh, well, nice yeah. hair. That's very Easter hair for your dog. Oh, she's a punk rocker. I so, love it. Yeah. So what I'm going to mention, there were so many different types of things. I've said the beacon score issues with credit. Um, income, like I said, there's all sorts of intangibles that happen. But that exit strategy is at least you and the borrowers have agreed that this is our plan of attack. And this is what we're going to present to the lender as a possible way to pay out the mortgage. Saying that it's on um, the exit strategy is a foreclosure, probably not something that we want to hear. But don't think it doesn't happen. Look, they don't want to sell their house or the house is in an area where there's really no market uh, real estate market, there's no transactions happening and they don't wanna sell, they're going to try, but it doesn't happen. They are not able to make their payments um, and a foreclosure happens and the lender ends up selling the property. I've already tell you, um, nobody likes a foreclosure. No lender wants to go through it, but dealing with a, a lender that respects the process and respects the fact that you've done everything that you can do. We've, you know, had one of our underwriters got flowers from a borrower that we actually had to foreclose on oh. because we respected the, the situation. 
and yeah. communicated well with them and they communicated with us. There was just no other way. That is not the exit we want. So a detailed exit strategy is important, but also knowing that uh, your exit strategy may not come to fruition in that year. So if it doesn't come into fruition in that year, say it was income and we still in COVID and they're not back to work, but they're still equity, they're still making their payments, however they're making them. Great, will that lender renew? So you got to make sure that you're dealing with a lender like a Mick that will say, yeah, this is the business we're in. Sure, they've been making their payments. We'll renew and not just slam the door and foreclose. Very, very important exit strategy. But it changes and we know that. And the second part of that is communication. So if, you're, if your exit strategy is not working out, the consumer should be calling you, the mortgage professional, and saying, oh my gosh, I, I'm still not back to work. And I'm sure that you would be regularly in contact with them anyway. Can you talk to the lawyer or talk to not talk to the lawyer, talk to the lender because you're you are the liaison between us and your borrowing client. And good mortgage professionals will be in contact with a lender. It's Making really sure that our plan is in place. Yeah. Anything that comes up, then we can try and you know jump over those hurdles as we need to. Yeah. The landscape for private lending, alternative lending has really changed. Um, it's become more mainstream than ever. I, like I said, you know, back in the day, I'm sure my dad had made deals on napkins. Yeah, we'll do this mortgage for uh, whatever percentage rate. Come into the office tomorrow, we'll sign you up. Uh, that doesn't happen anymore. <laughs> you know, but it's really cool though, because dealing with a Fiskard is no different than dealing with TD or Scotia as far as sending your application in. It's all on secure platforms. It's not, you know, handing your, your uh, credit bureau over this printed out handing to someone that you don't even know. We all agree that in the last couple of years, uh, the most valuable information out there is someone's personal information, their credit, their SIN, their address, their job information, their credit card numbers. This is all the information that is on mortgage applications and on credit bureaus. Well, now the way that we deal in the industry, it's all on secure platforms. It's not passing paper here and there. It's all very professional. And clients' information security is one of our number one priorities, making sure that it's secure. And so it's no, it's no different than dealing with the larger institutions. It never used to be that way. Uh, it really was a pass of a file. Here's my client's information. So you can rest assured when you can tell your clients, if you're taking them to Fiskart or another MIC, say, hey, you know, this is not that shadow lending that you hear in the newspaper. Yeah. It's not that at all. These are highly regulated, professional, secure institutions. It's interesting. Our company, Fiskart, is larger than 80% of the credit unions in British Columbia. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's and in Alberta. There's not as many credit unions in Alberta as there are in British Columbia. Yeah. But there are some smaller credit unions. We're larger than, I bet, in Alberta, probably even more than that because you have some very small credit unions. And that's always a shocking stat when I tell people that. It's like, what? How could... Credit unions, credit unions can be very, very small. The difference is their deposit taking. Their clients walk in, they deposit their money. Um, they have other, you know, car loans, et cetera. It's not the case. So we have to, again, you're dispelling the myth. These are not tiny little small um, lenders in the back room. No. Very That's awesome. And I, I really like the, the steps that have been taken recently about how the client's applications have to be submitted securely. Yeah. I, I think there was a lot of pushback within our industry about that recently. Uh, but I'm, if it's keeping the client safe, I'm all for it. That's right. And, and, and that's really important information that they're trusting us with you as a mortgage professional and us as a lender. So, you know, no, we all know, again, that is the most valuable information out there for fraudsters. Yes. So it behooves us to take the next step. We heavily invest in technology. It's the only way that we can receive credit bureaus. Now, if a mortgage broker or anyone else sent me a credit bureau by email, I have to send it back. I cannot open it. We can lose our access to um, Equifax or TransUnion if we're caught doing that. So there are some significant ramifications. If we were to ever accept a bureau that was not secure and online, and I think it's a really good thing. It just takes that private alternative lending business like we're in up to another, another level of professionalism. And isn't that what we all want? You know, I truly believe it is. Yeah. Is there anything else? I know we're running out of time here. So is there anything else that you want consumers or clients to know? 
that we maybe haven't touched on? Absolutely. Watch your consumer credit. It's more important than, than ever. I mean, it really is super important. Do you really need that snowmobile? Do you really need to buy that RV? Maybe you could just be renting it for the two weeks that you need it. I, you know, this, I just want people to be more conscious about their wants and needs and having consumer credit. It's really detrimental over the long term, unless you can seriously, pay, you know, you think you can pay it off very, very quickly. Dealing with a mortgage professional, top of mind. We only accept um, mortgage applications from a licensed mortgage broker. We do not accept applications from um, a consumer to walk in the door. We want to deal with mortgage professionals. And for anyone that's listening, I, you know, it's really important. They're going to take a look at your situation. They're going to know where to send your deal. They're going to know what's, what special situation lender is going to be able to help you out. That's really important. And I get, you know, so that consumer debt, knowing your lender, understanding your marketplace, and really don't be afraid of the rate. Have your client do the math. Have, sorry, have your broker do the math. You'd be surprised at how overall inexpensive dealing with an alternative slash private lender, and we're still in that, that, that terminology, is about a really great short-term solution. Awesome. Yeah, I, it's, it's amazing how things have just kind of changed over the years. You know, I'm, I'm a baby still at 12 years. Yeah. With the, in the industry. Oh, it changes all the time, it, it, all the time. It's, and it always will. And that's the one the great thing about our industry and staying educated. You know, every day you're getting new emails from all of your lenders, from your regulators, changes in mortgage products, et cetera. It's unbelievable how much we have to absorb as mortgage professionals in this business. But how great is that for our clients? Yep. It's our job to know that. It's our job to know what's out there for you. You know, walking into a bank, you're going to get their product. That's all they're going to present to you. That doesn't necessarily mean it's what's best for you. It's what they have to offer you. So at the very least, dealing with a licensed mortgage broker, you got to make that call. You've got to have something to compare to. Exactly. No, that's awesome. Well, Miss Rocky Balboa is already doing ah. some whining here, right? Uh, <laughs> thanks for having me on. I really appreciate it. And you know, this other products and do lots of construction. There's not a lot of construction or renovation financing out there right now, as far as from the banks and credit unions, only accessible through mortgage brokers, but you can pretty much come up with any situation and call someone like Lisa and she's going to be able to look at her book and go, okay, I'm going to call Fiskard for this. Or I'm going to call so for this. And uh, you're going to, you're going to have somewhere to go. I think yeah. Well, thank you. I really appreciate your time. I know everybody's completely swamped, yeah. but you know, it's just one of those things we need to get the information out. So I appreciate your time. Okay. And, and I thank you for doing this. I love <laughs> Facebook Live. I love the fact that you're educating your clients. It's really cool. Well done. Thank you very much. Um, any, if anybody's had any questions, you already know that I don't pay attention to the comments on the video while the video is live. So if you are commenting, I'll review afterwards and we'll get the information back. If you don't want to leave a comment, then just send me a message and I will find out the information that you need. So again, thanks so much very much for coming on and, uh, I'm sure we can, we've got lots of other topics we can discuss later. Anytime. Let me know. Happy to help. Perfect. Thank you. Welcome.